as we transition into 2017, we've been at this process since January, a process that for us has really been energizing. This is about a physicality that has to happen. We can't control what happened last year. We can really only control our attitude now, our focus now, an opportunity to showcase our total preparation. You're trained for this. You worked to be in this position. Notre Dame with a whole new look in their operation of their football team with new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, Brian Polian back to coach special teams. Each other's back. We play our asses off for each other today. It's time to go unleashed. For the first time in 2017, here come the Irish. Start of the Brandon Wimbush era as the junior quarterback gets the nod. And this young man, Wimbush, the six foot one junior from New Jersey, can run. Wimbush in the open field. Wimbush makes a man miss. Stays alive. Stays on his feet. Firing end zone. It is touchdown. Equinemius St. Brown. It's caught. It's a touchdown. It's Durham Smythe on the playoff end. Wimbush rips it. It is caught. Touchdown. Kevin Stefferson. Puts it up top to the end zone, caught for the Nick Wisher touchdown. Like a Swiss watch, this offense. Perfect movement. Yeah! Yes! Zero on the scoreboard at the end. You clear on that? You two all to see how we can be, man. Let's go. Win the game of details, because that's part of our process. Firing downfield. Intercepted by Notre Dame. Greer Martini. South fumble. Recovered by Notre Dame. Crawford's going to win that fight. Watch out, Julian Love. Touchdown. And the pass is intercepted. Left 30. Left 20. Love down. Picked off by Nick Watkins. Notre Dame defense comes through on fourth down. Tipped ball. And it's intercepted. Picked off on the carrot. That was comes straight through. No chance for Sarah. Right there, he doesn't care how good a defense they played. He wants them to finish. On the way down, he lost the football. And Notre Dame gets a takeaway. From run down, Niles Morgan. Pick it up, and it's intercepted by Troy Bryant Jr. He's one of the most improved units in all of college football. You give them hope, they'll get back into this football game. We are living in the moment of history right now. We've been trained for this opportunity. We've been waiting for this opportunity. There goes Josh. Big run, Adams. 30 yards, 35 yards. Another run. He goes on the run again. Another huge touchdown. He's gone. Touchdown again, Josh Adams. Go away. Go away. Dexter Williams. Go all the way in. Find some room inside the 10. Touchdown, Irish. Persistence in the offensive line. Tony Jones Jr. running free. Fourth rushing touchdown of the day, and he's got it. Jones who takes it into the end zone. And again, that left side paved the way for a Notre Dame touchdown. This is a team that has great endurance and great perseverance. Hey, we had three guys getting in the end zone, so I'm going to hand this off to the offensive line. It's against one of the top rushing offenses. Something's got to give. Something gave! Yeah. That's the Seeing that, that video, that was, that was powerful. I remember seeing that uh, Josh Adams run when we blew out USC. Now that was sweet. <laughs> I wish we had stuff like this when I played here. Not close to this, guys. I know a lot of things have changed. All these buildings popping up. Man, the technology here, the technology is insane. You know what hasn't changed, though? It's Notre Dame players being nominated for national awards. We've got this year's Outland Trophy finalist, Quentin Nelson. Yeah. We've got this year's Werfel Pop Warner Trophy finalist, Drew Tranquil. 
We've got this year's Sports Illustrated second team All-American cornerback, Julian Love. We've got this year's Walter Camp first team All-American offensive line tandem, Quentin Nelson and Mike McGlitchie. And that off offensive line was impressive all year long, being nominated for the Joe Moore Award. Yes, right. And how can we forget about Montgomery Van Gorder being nominated for the Mortel Holder of the Year Award? Yes, it is true. <laughs> and freshman John Mahoney was one of only five players to receive a 2017 National Football Founder Chapter Scholarship a Athlete based on high school accomplishments. There we go, give him a clap, man. But we're gathered here tonight to give out echoes for all those hardworking players and what they have done over this past year. Then at the end of the show, we'll award this year's MVP. We have four players up for it. Let's take a look at the first nominee. He's got so many big runs this year. He's agile. Touchdown again, Josh Adams. Quick. He's gone. He's faster than everybody. He's stronger than everybody. Touchdown Notre Dame. It's Josh Adams. Josh Adams, when he's on the field, he'll make any team better. Miami of Ohio game this year. It, it was, in, I was like, wow, that, that's incredible. I missed the linebacker. Josh made a cut. So you hear the crowd kind of start to roar, and you, can, you know what's happening. You take a look, and Josh is just flying. You run after him, arms up and everything. You know, no one's catching him. I love blocking for a running back who is going to give his all um, on every play. All of a sudden, he did a jump cut in front of me and kicked the ball outside, and it was, like, unreal. Uh, I couldn't believe it. It's pretty sick. Just complete wow moments where you're like, holy cow, this guy's the real deal. You can, you can always count on him. That's something he said in that speech, too, and it's paid dividends this season, as you can see. Josh is, is a great guy. He's a true leader. He's the one that jumps on him and tells him, hey, you got this, you know, don't worry about it. One of the best guys on our team. When that guy speaks, you listen. It's really a privilege um, to be able to play with a player as talented as Josh. I, I kind of look up to him, to be honest. He's a guy I think I would like to be in the future. Echoes 2017 Notre Dame Football's Awards Show continues after the break. Here to talk about the first award of the night is Vice President and James E. Rohr, Director of Athletics, Jack Swarbrick. Thank you for being here. On behalf of uh, Father John Jenkins and myself, I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a great New Year. I also want to thank you. I want to thank you for all that you have done to contribute to a remarkable season. I had the opportunity earlier today to spend about an hour with your MC, and all he wanted to talk about was what he could do to help make the program better what he could do to reconnect the guys he played with to the university. It spoke to the strength of the culture that existed when he played here. And this group of young men, the coaches that assisted them, the administrators that helped them, they restored that culture. That's the hardest thing to do in an organization, and you all did it. And the legacy of this group of athletes will forever be the restoration of that culture. Everyone deserves credit for that, but I want to mention two guys in particular. Because the measure of how much you love a place and how much you're committed to it and making it better is your decision to stick with it when you've got other very attractive options. So Mike and Q, thank you very much. Our first echo this evening is given tonight for someone who exemplifies what the University of Notre Dame is all about, being a well-rounded student athlete. 
You have the opportunity to earn a degree from one of the top universities and to play football in front of sold out crowds and on national television every week. Tonight, we'll showcase someone who excels both on the field and in the classroom. Here to present the award for the Rockney student athlete, please help me welcome senior defensive analyst and a young man who's going to be a great coach in the future, Tyler Santucci. Tyler. The Rockney Student Athlete Award is named after Notre Dame coaching legend Newt Rockney. He led Notre Dame to 105 victories and three national championships, and his winning percentage is still the highest in college football history. This year's echo goes to Drew Tranquil. The standard is the standard. When the standard is the standard, you live by that every day, and this guy exemplifies that and the standard of Notre Dame football. Round of applause. Thank you. This means a lot. I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, uh, my family sitting back there, my wonderful fiance, getting married next July. Can't wait, babe. Let's go, let's go. My sister, I love you so much. Um, I mean, just the opportunities that Notre Dame presents to student athlete and what it's meant to my life. This university has done so much for me. It really has. And I want to take the time now. I've been asked uh, quite often the past month or so, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to declare for the NFL draft or come back? Um, and I kind of wanted to put that to rest now when I had the opportunity to tell all my teammates um, and my coaches. But um, I'm going to be coming back home for my fifth year. <laughs> and uh, we're going to finish what we started, because uh, this is special, and I want to be a part of it. So thank you. Go Irish. And now for your next Most Valuable Player nominee. Brandon Wimbush, extremely mobile in the pocket, smart football player. Very well respected. Oh, triple C, calm, cool, and collected. He's a high character guy, a uh, guy that you can trust. And the sky's the limit for him. He's, a, he's an incredible kid. He's definitely a natural born leader. He'll do uh, whatever it takes to, to help his team win. He always wants the best for everyone. He wants the best for the team, you know, for the program. Obviously, he gets pumped on his touchdown celebrations. And the one on Michigan State, we still don't forgive him for, where he just started sprinting around on his QB drop. Uh, I mean, that Boston College game. That second half versus Boston College that he had. A brand then just took over with a bunch of great runs. He kind of ran up the right side. He gave this big spin move to a guy, then stiff-armed and reached out for the, for the goal line at the end. You're talking about a rare combination of size and speed. I mean, it's like his, his finger is stuck on the B button. He kind of spins whenever he can. That spin move, which is his signature. Brandon's a great player. He can always make something happen. You've seen it with his arm and with his legs. Firing end zone. It is touchdown. He's going to do whatever it takes to win the game, and nothing will ever satisfy him unless he wins. Echoes 2017, Notre Dame Football's Award Show continues in a few moments. You know, in my role as the Director of Player Development, I get the great opportunity to see these guys, not just as students and athletes, but as people, people in society, growing, learning. I see them striving on our campus. I see them striving for excellence. I see them having fun. I see them looking for opportunities to lead, looking for opportunities to engage, looking for opportunities to enrich the lives of people in our community and on our campus. We should feel really, really proud of the willingness that this group has to give of themselves and their time. One guy this year will be recognized for his outstanding willingness 
his incredible achievements and his willingness to serve and give to others. And to introduce this winner tonight, let's take a look at the video. Me and my middle brother Danny, we got in an argument with my older brother Andrew. I think it was about, you know, a video game or something. And uh, so me and Danny decided to team up on Andrew. We started chasing Andrew around with the broom, hitting him and stuff. And so Andrew hit into one of our, our closets and we're still trying to hit him as he closed. And all of a sudden we put a hole through the pantry door and everybody just stops. We tried to cover it up, but you know, that never really worked. You know, we learned our lesson about that, but there's obviously plenty more fights to come after that too. <laughs> brothers playing uh, football was something that really drew me to it. Just a game you can, you can go out and play and just focus on football. Everything else just kind of goes away in that moment. Andrew's my oldest brother. He was kind of just like the, the picture perfect kid growing up. He never really got in trouble. You know, he was a, a great student. Everyone loved him. He was a freshman in college and he called my parents one night and said, Mom and Dad, like, there, I think there's something wrong. I was the only one home, and when, he, when my parents came back with him from the doctor, he said, hey, Nick, uh, you know, I, I have cancer. He looked at me after he said that. He said, it's, you know, it's not, it's not going to be a big deal for me. I'm going to face this like an opponent in a football game. I'm, I'm going to beat it. He said to the nurse, he said, I'm not done fighting. He, he looked her in the eye and said that. This is a kid that, you know, he could barely stand up at this point, was just so physically weak. But mentally, he was saying, I'm not, I'm not done fighting. And that's kind of something I live my life by now. A couple weeks after that, Andrew, Andrew did pass away on October 12, 2012. You know, even a few days before he died, the night of, he brought my family together and he said, uh, the one thing I want out of this is to pay forward the kindness and generosity that I was shown. That's why we started the Andrew Wisher Foundation. And, and with that, um, we are taking money and giving it directly to, um, you know, people like Andrew who, you know, are just absolute fighters. And, and that's what we want to do. And that's what we've been doing through the foundation. The guys on the team see how much it means to me. And so therefore it means a lot to them. It just shows you the kind of character of the, of the guys on this team. I'm Nick Wisher, and these are my Notre Dame football teammates. Thank you so much for being here. Your, uh, your support means everything to us and my family. And just know that every dollar you guys have spent tonight is going directly to a family who needs it. Being a student athlete obviously is very time consuming, but I think uh, being a, you know, a high profile person that you know, kids and, and, and everybody in the community looks up to, it is our duty to be able to give back to them and show how much we appreciate them. To always be able to put a smile on somebody's face or you know, give back to somebody that doesn't have as much as you um, was just the way that I was brought up by my mom and dad. You know, being on the football field and seeing you know, 80,000 plus people, you realize that each person is obviously a person and that they're fighting their own battles and have their own happiness and their own sadness and sorrow. And, and I think just to focus on one particular person, if I could help them get through that battle, everything is worth it. The winner of this year's Echo, Nick Wisher. Wow, thank you guys so much. Um, this is obviously incredible to be, you know, standing in front of you. Um, the past four years has been an, an unbelievable experience, and I'm just glad we have the opportunity as you know Notre Dame athletes to to help put a smile on somebody um, who needs it. You know, a lot of times um, we're, we're busy schedules or whatnot, but every guy on our team has done a community service project at, at some point in their career here, and guys make it a point to do that. And that goes a big credit to Ron Pollis, too, for always having uh, opportunities for us. So let's give a big round of applause to Ron as well. <laughs> Also, thank you to my parents and my girlfriend for being here today. Um, obviously, I'm sure that that video wasn't very easy for my parents to watch. Um, you know, just, it, it's been a rough journey, um, you know, dealing with a, a brother who's passed. But uh, through our foundation, we're able to give back and, and, and find people like Andrew who are not going to stop fighting and, and help them in any way possible. 
So just blessed to be able to be a part of that and, and help something good come out of such a bad situation. Uh, thank you guys again, and I appreciate it. Go Irish. Wow, that was really impactful. The things that you and family are doing uh, keep up the incredible work. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are four nominees for MVP. Let's take a look at the highlights of the next nominee. 25, man. Start encouraging your brothers, man. Let's go. Let's you go. Make a play, man. Let's Encourage one another to make them more. Listen, let's go fire. Uh, this is the ultimate competitor on the field. You know, he's not gonna let anyone beat him. Uh, he's got that fierceness to him. Once you look him in his eyes, you know, on game day, you know, it's, it's time to go. Now, this is definitely the hardest hitter on the team. I mean, when he brings his head and he hits you, you're definitely gonna feel it. He's a captain, he's the quarterback of our defense, very vocal, always has been, uh, very intense guy. It's him against the offense, and he's gonna win. not living up to the standard of Notre Dame or the defense that we've set, he's going to let you know about it. Hey, say another one, say another one, say another one, let's go. He plays at one speed. He's hitting anything moving. Man, Niles big bro, man. Guy, guy always comes to uh, practice, comes to everything football related with an intensity that you have to meet. He's like, hey, everybody meet me at the ball or I'm meeting y'all at the ball. No matter what, everybody get to the ball. It's about everybody including us, man. Big me us. Let's get it. Well, Niles has, is going to leave a great legacy to show the younger guys how working hard and improving each and every day in, in your craft will pay out for you in the long run. He just shows an example about working hard and showing the guys how the work should be done each and every day, and you just have to follow. Niles is going to leave a legacy of doing things the right way every time. I can say he's a leader, but most definitely he's a savage. More Notre Dame football when we return. Nobody said this was going to be easy. Nobody promised this was going to be easy. All right, we got to go. Be smart with the ball. Make a play. Let's go. Tavon Coney continues the momentum of the half. And Tyler Newsom hangs it high. Must. Irish have it. And Drew Trequel has it for Notre Dame. On time down the middle. Fake punt. Here come the Irish. Tony Jones Jr. running free. Recruiting and special teams coordinator Brian Polian. One of the great pleasures of coaching special teams is that you get to work with a cross-section of every position group and, and you get to know a lot of different guys and the honoree tonight is somebody it was a great pleasure to work with, get to know throughout the course of the year and really in the second half of the season presented himself as one of our most reliable and productive special teams players. So let's take a look at the video. Got teeth like razor blades, and you know that we're out for blood. We're out Martini for blood. was there. Oh, 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 Real Martini. Welcome to the stage, the Special Teams Player of the Year, Greer Martini. I'll just share one, uh, one story with you about four or five games into the season, uh, Greer came to me privately and said, I need to do more. I need to be on more units and doing what we do in special teams, that's the single best thing that you can hear from a competitor. And it was a joy to coach him. Greer. Uh, I'm honored to win this award. Um, Love special teams, like going out there, doing it for my boys. I get to be on special teams with a lot of different guys on the team, so I love that coming together. 
Um, but like, this team's been so special to me. This university's meant so much to me. Uh, my parents are here for the last time. Like, I'll miss seeing them around here. But I just want to say, like, guys, you guys have made this experience what it is, um, and I love you guys. Go Irish. We've already seen three of this year's MVP nominees. Let's see the highlights for the fourth and final MVP for the 2017 season. I think Quentin Nelson is going to go down as one of the greatest offensive linemen to ever play here. I think he's hands down the best offensive lineman in college football this year. Just him in general is just like, you know, he's a dominating player. When you see a guy of that size running as fast as he does and just how gracefully his feet are when he does it, you realize, you know, this is probably the best offensive lineman I've ever seen. <laughs> I keep seeing this, this video on Twitter. Uh, it was against Georgia. I believe it was a nickel or a safety, somebody who was blitzing in the opposite gap. I slid the protection one way and he had no one to pick up. He sees the work go away and he scans backside and he sees him blitzing and he just comes back and decapitates this dude. Never seen it before. It was one hell of a play. He saved my butt from it. You might say that it's a block. You might say that it's a pass protection, but it's sprinting 50 yards downfield to celebrate a touchdown with a teammate. His legacy is just going to be one of greatness for other people to look back and say, this is how it's supposed to be done. When we come back, hear from Notre Dame's Offensive Player of the Year. We're still going to be aggressive, all right? We're going to make those plays at the end, guys. Be greedy. You got me? All right, it starts with our physicality. Adams runs up the middle. He's got so many big runs this year. Can he take this home? He's gone. Touch pass to Claypool. Touchdown. Wimbush in the open field. Wimbush makes a man miss. All the way home. He's gone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Wimbush rips it. It is caught. Touchdown. Vince Stefferson. We originally planned to have running backs coach Autry Denson present the Offensive Player of the Year Award. But unfortunately, due to recruiting travel, he's unable to be with us tonight. So I'm cashing in my SWAT points because I want to give this one out myself. There were some great players that played really hard this year on offense, but this player made some big plays when the team needed the most. Let's take a look at the highlights of the Offensive Player of the Year. And there goes 33. Josh Adams in the clear. What a start to the season. Touchdown. And the 30 and the 20. Will they catch him? They will not. He goes in. 73-yard touchdown run. Adams runs up the middle. He's got so many big runs this year. Can he take this home? He's gone. Touchdown again, Josh Adams. goes to Josh Adams. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Now, coach is not here, so you don't have to be as humble uh, as, you, as you normally are, because I heard about it, but what would you, how would you say the success came this year? Because it, it just, it was incredible how well you did this year. I mean, glory, glory goes to God. Um, I wouldn't be here without him. I wouldn't be here without my family. I mean, just the rest of the guys on the team, uh, we pretty much did this thing together and we took it upon ourselves to rebuild this uh, program and, and say, this is our team and we're gonna do it our way. So uh, a lot of the credit goes to those guys. And of course, uh, the offensive line, you got that many guys up front, you gotta love running behind them, so. Yeah, the offensive line, you know, they were just outstanding this year. Talk about, was there, was there anything that you ever looked for with the offensive line? Did you talk to them before the game? What did you do in terms of to really connect with the offensive line? Uh, I mean, just off the field, we, we, we all kind of have a, a good relationship, but before the games, just giving them dap, you know, telling them that I love them and we're just gonna go out there and play some football. So I don't really need to tell them too much because I know that they're gonna do their job. So I just gotta do mine. Well, I know with, with all the school and obviously the football, you still find time to get in the community and, and do some mentoring work. What made you want to actually start to do that? Uh, I just realized that um, t 
to whom much is given, much is required, and I'm on a platform that not many people get to, to be on. You know, when I was younger, I had a lot of guys that I looked up to and a lot of people that, you know, I wanted to be like, and I wanted to be that person for somebody else. And, um, you know, it's a blessing to be here, and I wanted, you know, to bless, you know, somebody else. So uh, that mentoring program is something that I took it upon myself to make sure that I fit in my schedule. And uh, I'm just grateful and glad that I was able to, to do something like that. Well, speaking of, you know, your time as a youth and, and wanting to be like, who did you kind of, you know, idolize as a football player or kind of, you know, trait your game and say, you know what, I want to play like this, this guy? Um, I, I always kind of wanted to, to be unique in, in my own way. You know, I'm a 6'3 running back and there's not too many, <laughs> too many others. You're right about that. Um, and I knew that I, I couldn't really put my game to, to be somebody else's, so I just wanted to go out there and, and do what I could and do, you know, big things and do great things in, in God's name and, and do it how I, how I could. I wanted to be my own person. But uh, when I was in high school, there was this guy named Eric Reynolds uh, who went to my high school, set all the records there. And, you know, when I was growing up, you know, I said I want to break every record that he has. And, um, and that kind of got me set on the path that I'm on now. Well, I'm sure you broke those records, right? No, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't break it. Well, you're going to no. break it now. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 2017 Offensive MVP. When we come back, hear from Notre Dame's Defensive Player of the Year. Zero on the scoreboard at the end. Are you clear on that? Chance for Sarek. Raglan firing downfield. Intercepted by Notre Dame. Rear Marcini. Tipped ball. And it's intercepted. Picked off on the carom. With his second sack of the season. Drew Tranquil is there along with Niles Morgan. Notre Dame defense comes through on fourth down. Here to present the Defensive Player of the Year award, please welcome defensive coordinator Mike Elko. We had some great players this year on defense. They did an unbelievable job of buying into a new coach, a new system. Uh, we had a lot of guys that consistently stepped up and made plays uh, when we needed them the most, okay? And, and there's a lot of guys uh, that have a chance to be the MVP. Take a look at the highlights, the defense MVP of the year. Fromm gets away. Fromm takes off. Fromm brought down. Niles Morgan. Chased down by Niles. to get to the edge with Jamal Daniel, but a terrific stop by Niles Morgan. And the echo goes to Niles Morgan. You know, when I got hired a year ago, one of the first calls I made was to Niles, and uh, it became really clear to me that if we were going to have a special year this year, Niles was going to be a big part of it. And, and so proud of what he did buying into this system and this staff and uh, really putting this defense on his back. He did an unbelievable job for us this year. Give it up for Niles Morgan. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, know, I don't know what I'm doing up here with these players like well, this. Well, Coach, I want to start with you first then about, about Niles. Uh, what, do you, what do you see as the strength uh, of his game and what he brings to the table? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to piggyback on what Tavon said on one of these videos. He's one of the hardest hitters I've ever been around, and, and that became really clear. You know, when he hits people, they feel it. And, uh, you know, it'd be an interesting, interesting battle, you and him and the whole one day. I'd like to see that. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm old, so he probably <laughs> he'd take me out right now. No, I, I, I believe that. Well, you know, you're a, a team captain. It's something that, that I never got the opportunity uh, to be. So what is it like to be a team captain for the Fighting Irish? You know, it was just such an honor. And um, it really actually gave me, um, I guess, kind of like a humble experience. It's kind of weird, you know, but because, you know, it's just, I, I just kind of felt like this pressure that I've never felt before. And, you know, this being just one of, like, I think one of my greatest challenges ever because, you know, it was hard for me actually coming up, you know, initially just, you know, 
just being the guy who was, you know, early, being the guy who was, you know, pushing other guys forward, being the guy who was, you know, always setting the example all the time. You know, I've, I think that I've grown a lot during my uh, four years here. And, you know, I think that this was the, I think, one of the greatest challenges I've had so far in my life. And, and I really appreciate it from all you guys, all my teammates. I love all you guys, you know. Yeah, uh, that's it. Well, going through, what goes through your mind now that you're probably going to play your last game and, and you're going down, you're going to play LSU. What, what, what goes through your mind as you kind of go back through uh, your career here at Notre Dame? Man, um, I would just say, you know, it just happened so fast. You know, I remember me being a freshman and Adam Sargent is yelling at me about going to class or something like that. Or, you know, I'm just like not doing what I should be doing or something like that. But, um, but now, you know, looking back, it's like I've, it's just, it just went like this. And, you know, now it's like I'm taking a last look at, like, the Basilica, you know, a last look at, like, the stadium. Like, um, it's just something that, you know, I just really can't explain. You know, you kind of got to, well, you guys have been in my shoes. Like, <laughs> but, you know, just for, like, all of, like, the underclassmen, you know, it really is something special, you know, leaving this place. Well, Coach, how do you replace a, a, a captain and, and a guy that uh, really kind of helped rally the guys around uh, that defense? How do you replace a guy like uh, that? I don't know if anyone replaces them. I think uh, we're going to need some guys to step up and fill uh, a lot of roles. We're going to need a guy to step up and fill the leadership role. Uh, we're going to need to step up the production and fill that role. Um, you know, and it'll be a collective group. I don't know if we've got one guy who can just step right into yeah, what he did yeah. this year. Well, now, congratulations again. 2017 Defensive <laughs> Player of the Year. When we come back, hear from Notre Dame's most valuable player. Lock in and go have that mindset that we talked about dominating your opponent today. Josh Adams in the clear for the start to the season. If you've got energy and you've got enthusiasm and you've got love for this game and this university, we take it over in this quarter and we end this football yes, game. Sir. Watch out, Julian Love, touchdown! Yeah. Something's got to give. Something gives! Everybody understood the process. Everybody understood total preparation. The day was total dominance. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, now the presenter of the Most Valuable Player Award. Please welcome the Dick Corbett head football coach, Brian Kelly. Thank you. You know, this year, the building of this year started at this banquet, and it started with naming the captains. I think we all knew that we needed to start with our leadership. And so this year was about redefining who a Notre Dame football player was. The total preparation, in the weight room, the early mornings, all the work that you did in spring ball, the technical work, the tactical work, and then the mental work in preparing yourself to dominate your opponents. So when we get down to our last award tonight, the most valuable player, it's not just about what you do on the football field. It's about everything that touches our mission of excellence. The MVP is awarded by the Notre Dame National Monogram Club, which formerly created in 1916 by the athletic director and head football coach Jesse Harper, who wanted the university varsity letters to unite and promote spirit, unity, leadership, and sportsmanship. Before I present the award, let's take a look back at some of our past MVP award winners. Inside of the 10, and he will score! Here's Henry pitching again. At the 30, my God, it's gonna be a foot race! To the 40, to the 50, down the sideline, at the 30, pulling away! Caught by Miller! He's on the run! What a phenomenal play! 75 yards! Now pick it will score a touchdown! It's caught by Samarja inside the 20, inside the 10. He's going in. Notre Dame has scored. Brady Quinn does it again. Up to grabs and grabbed by who else? Golden Tate. As the first one down the sideline, he's
we've seen the highlights of all the nominees, four really outstanding players, but we can only choose one. So on behalf of the Notre Dame Monogram Club, I'd like to announce that this year's Echoes for the most valuable player is awarded to somebody whose presence would be felt if he was not with us on a day-to-day -day basis. This year's winner, Quentin Nelson. I'd like to say a few words about Quentin Nelson as he comes up. Uh, Quentin was a first time captain for us and um, as our captains know, uh, one of the things that we did is we did a, a character trait. Uh, what were your strengths as a character, as a leader? And one of Quentin's strengths as a character trait was honesty, brutal honesty. And we worked on that trait every day, but where that came out was that he was unwavering in the commitment that he made to Notre Dame and held everybody to that standard. And that's why we are where we are today. Thank you, Quentin Nelson. Thanks, Thanks my friend. It's been a pleasure. Congratulations. Thanks, Ron. Can I call you Q? Yeah, that's fine. I appreciate that. <laughs> coach, well, just tell me, how, how much of a, a joy was it to, uh, to coach Q? Well, you know, as a head coach, I see it from a, a different perspective. If you asked Harry, obviously he's going to talk more about the technical and the yeah. tactical in terms of what he does. Whatever I asked him to do, whatever message that we needed to resonate through the ranks, he was able to do that for me on a day-to-day -day basis. Q, you've got to help me out. Walk me through that play that, that we saw that, you know, against, what was that, uh, USC? No, uh, it was actually Georgia. Georgia, right, yeah. against Georgia. I mean, incredible play. What went through your mind at that point? Yeah, I mean, so Brandon checked the protection the wrong way. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I was probably, I was probably telling Brandon to slide it that way anyway. But uh, Remember we said he's brutally honest. Right. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there was no one for me to block, uh, so I figured the blitz was coming from the other side. And I uh, went over there and found some work. <laughs> you found somebody to block? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, I like that. <laughs> so tell me, you know, you're finishing up your Notre Dame career. What are you gonna remember most about your time here at Notre Dame? I would say uh, the relationships I've uh, built, uh, especially like with all the teammates in the locker room, these are the best guys in the country, uh, everyone, and especially the offensive line. Um, I, I cherish the memories and the relationships I've uh, made with Jimmy Byrne, uh, Sam Mustafer, Alex's sister. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now, just, just the guys and also meeting all the family of uh, all the guys on the team too. Um, such a great place and it attracts the, uh, the best people in the world. I don't know if you're gonna meet too many more families now. <laughs> well, that, that was pretty, pretty funny there. So, <laughs> Coach, now, you know, I, I know you, you can't replace uh, a guy like him, but when, when you go back and you think about recruiting him, mm -hmm. uh, could you have seen that he was going to be this talented uh, when you went into his home and, and, and talked to him? Well, he loved to play. I mean, you know, when you're looking for the traits in, in players, he loved to play the game. He wanted yeah. to be great. So when you're looking for those kind of players, and then, you know, obviously he, he loved to be in the weight room and to get stronger. The best players are always going to be out front. and, and yeah. The best player here was out front in all the workouts as well. So um, he just had all those special traits that you look for in recruiting. So he had a chance to be great if he had that work ethic, and he had that work ethic. And young guys, learn something from him. I know you guys are, are getting ready to step into his shoes. Learn from him. He did it, he did it leading yep. out front. So you got to be out front. Quinn, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Notre Dame MVP.